Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 5, Apply Newton's Laws, Video 5. Today's topic is frictional force, the special one fluid resistance, and the terminal speed. The objectives are no fluid resistance is affected by speed. Understand object falling through fluid does not have constant acceleration. Be able to apply Newton's laws to solve problems involving air resistance. Be able to graph dt, vt, at for objects in counter resistance that varies with speed. Fluid resistance at low speed. Fluid resistance is the force that a fluid, such as gas or liquid, exerts on a body moving through it. The direction of the fluid resistance force acting on a body is always opposite the direction of the body's velocity relative to the fluid. So this is a vector quantity, so the direction of f is always opposite of the v. But the magnitude f is just equals to a v, uh, k times v. The magnitude of fluid resistance usually increase with speed. In this case, is directly proportional. For a very low speed, f uh, of the fluid resistance force can be described by using uh, this equation. This is for low speed equation. Uh, fluid resistance at low speed. In this case, K is a constant that depends on the shape and the size of the body and the properties of the fluid. The unit for K, it can be Newton times second divided by a meter or kilograms divided by second. Air drag, fluid resistance at high speed. So you motion through air at a speed of towards tennis ball or faster, the resistance force is uh, or faster, the resistance force is approximately proportional to V squared rather than V. It is, it is then called the air drag or simply drag. Airplanes falling raindrops and the bicyclist all experience air drag. The air drag on a typical car is negligible at low speed, but comparable to or greater than the rolling friction at highway speed. So the uh, relationship for the high a uh, speed is f equals to d times v squared. So in this in this equation, it only indicates magnitude and not the direction. The direction of f is always opposite of v. So this equation is fluid resistance at high speed. The value d again depends on the shape and size of the body and on the density of the air. The units of the constant d are n times s squared over m squared or kilograms over meters. Uh, so in both cases, acceleration is not constant. So here's a rock falling water, uh, falling in water, the free body diagram. There is F, there is W. W is constant, but F changes. Therefore, acceleration is not constant. Because the effect of fluid resistance and object falling in the fluid does not have a constant acceleration. So find acceleration at a point of time, we need to use Newton's second law. The sum of the force in Fy equals mg minus F, which is may. Uh, in this case, downward y is positive direction. And this F is just a magnitude of a fluid resistance. So for low speed, F equals kV. The magnitude is kV. So mg minus kV equals may. For high speed, it's mg minus dV squared equals may. Terminal velocity for slow moving object. So when object first starts to fall, its initial velocity equals to zero. The resistance force is also zero and the initial acceleration is G. During the time of falling, we can apply Newton's law, second law to determine its acceleration. We have Mg minus kV equals May. As the speed increases, air resistance K times V also increases until finally it is equal in magnitude to the weight. At this time, mg minus K VT equals to zero. This VT is called a terminal speed. The acceleration at that point of acceleration is zero and there is no further increase in speed. The final speed VT called the terminal speed is given by this equation. We can solve this. And we, we can add K times VT on both sides, then divide by K, we get VT equals mg divided by K. This is terminal speed for slow-moving object. 
terminal velocity fast moving object. So for the similar reasons, we just change the equation for fast moving object. We can get term terminal velocity for fast moving object is square root of mg divided by d. Here are the graphs for slow moving object f equals to negative kv. This is again for slow. So again, when you started, when the object is dropped in the beginning, you'll have acceleration equals to g. As the object falls, g decreases, eventually approaches to zero, but it will never actually touches zero. Velocity is initial velocity equals to zero, right? You see this horizontal line, this horizontal line indicated when there is no uh, fluid resistance. So we know Ay equals to G if we use downward as positive. And here the straight line indicate if there is no fluid resistance, so V would increase at the same rate. So the slope of this line is G. But when you have air resistance, Vt approaches to a constant. V, I mean V approaches to a constant called Vt, terminal velocity. So this line is called a terminal velocity. Let's take a look at position versus time graph. For no fluid resistance, we know x is directly proportional to t squared. So this is parabolic line or parabola. But when fluid resistance uh, increases, this it's eventually this line becomes a straight line because its speed is constant. So slope of this part is your terminal velocity. So in the beginning, it's a parabola kind of curve the line then you'll have constant slope. Let's take a look at this example for determine the terminal speed of a skydiver. So for a human body falling through air in a spread equal position, the numerical value of constant D is about 0.25 kilograms per meter. Find the terminal speed for the lightweight 50 kilogram skydiver. So in this case, because this is moving through air, um, at a higher speed, so the equation of, or the air resistance is proportional to dv squared. So here's a free body diagram for in the beginning, before terminal speed, object accelerating, drag force is less than the weight. And in this case, this is the terminal speed, vt, this uh, the air resistance and the weight balances. So the object is in equilibrium and acceleration equals to zero. So the question is saying, what is a terminal speed? A terminal speed happens when air resistance and the weight cancel out each other. So dv squared equals to mg. So this is a general equation for terminal velocity ay equals to zero. So we set this equals to zero. We can solve for vt equals to square root of mg over t. Next part, you simply plug in your m, your g, and your d, and you get 44 meters per second. Determine acceleration of slow moving object through fluid. So this is the part that looks intimidating, but hopefully by the, um, as you learn more in math, you should be able to do this. As a matter of fact, you are expected to do this. So I'm just going to give you an introduction, like the idea behind how you get this results, how the V gets um, to be this. That's set up from the first equation, net force equals mg minus kV. mg, uh, I mean, F net equals mg minus kV. F net is m times a. And A is dV over dt, that's the derivative of V. So now this is differential equation. So when you take a test, this is the first part you have to write. Then you have to make sure you have your differential equation. Once you have differential equation, this is part mg minus kV. You can't break that apart. You have to keep this together and move this with the dV because this is a variable with V. So you divide this on both sides. So divide m also on both sides. You will have this expression, mg minus kv times dv, because v and v together. The other one, this is m and t. m is, is different from t. As a matter of fact, you can leave the m on this side. We'll just make the integral a little bit harder. So sometimes we 
make everything easy for us. This m it doesn't really matter. It's just a constant. One over m is a constant dt. Then we integral on both sides. So v starts from zero to any variable, any velocity v from the time t equals to zero to any time t. When you solve this, this is the answer you should get. v equals to mg over k times one minus e to the negative one over mt. And the, the graph you'll have, remember the graph you saw before, v from the beginning and it comes approaching to vt, and this is the shape of that graph. Again, later on, we'll be going this in more detail. Let's take a look at, uh, at check your understanding. Consider a box that is placed on different surfaces. In which situation is there no friction force acting on the box? In which situation is there static friction force acting on the box? And in which situation is there kinetic friction force acting on the box? So these are the situations. One, the box is at rest on a horizontal surface. Two, a box is at rest on a rough tilted surface. Three, a box is on the rough surface, the flat bed of a truck. The truck is moving at a constant velocity on a straight level road, and the box remains in the same place in the middle of the truck bed. Four, the box is on the rough surface, the flat bed of a truck. The truck is speeding up on a straight level road, and the box remains in the same place in the middle of the truck bed. Five, the box is on the rough surface, surface the flat bed of the truck. The truck is climbing a hill and the box is sliding toward the back of the truck. So these are the five different surfaces, different situations. So in which situation is there no friction acting on the box? So when there is no friction, that means the box is at rest and there is no other force acting, no like applied force acting on the box. So this case would be the first one. The box is at rest, and the third one, the box on the rough surface, but the truck is moving at a constant velocity, so truck is not accelerating, and the box remains in the same place, so the box is not accelerating. So one and a three. In this case, there is no friction. Okay, in which situation is there static friction? Static friction is the box has a tendency to move. It's in this case, the box is resting on rough tilted surface. So if there's no friction, the box would slide down, but it's not because there is static friction. So number two and number four, the box is on the rough surface, a flat bed of a truck, and the truck is speeding up on a straight level road. So the truck is accelerating. Since the box is remains in the same place in the middle of the truck, so the box must accelerate also. What provides that acceleration? Friction is the one that's provide that acceleration. So in this case, B is two and four. The last one is gives us five. So kinetic friction, the box has to move. So out of all the situations, only five, the box is moving. Since the box is moving, it has kinetic friction. That's it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.